I was talking about um, on Tuesday, the idea of remembering that everyone is God in drag. And the idea of that being that nature of the universe is in all beings. And that when that moment came that Arjuna realized that Krishna was not just a friend, but was the universe, you know, and the Gita, it's such a beautiful moment when he's like, you know, can you please show me your cosmic form? And when he does show him this cosmic form, it's not made of just all things beautiful. It's also made of things that are dark and scary. And so I was talking about how, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm over it now, but how I had a couple of days of being annoyed at someone. <laughs> and maybe that happens to you, I don't know. But the idea for me was to look into my teachings and the teachings to me, they remember that that when you get touched at your core, something really gets touched at your core, that it's for you. And it's the universe telling you that this is the God in front of you, whether it is the the, the one that you like or the one that you don't like, but it's something there to wake you up. And so I want to move through class today with pranams. And what is that? That's when you allow your whole body to lay down on your mat. Hi. Oh, I'm so lost. Don't Sorry. worry. I'm so glad you're here. Hold on one second, okay, my friends? Don't apologize. You're here. Let me just go ahead and get the temperature real quick. Don't worry. Take your breath. Okay, I'm back. Um, so to really allow yourself to pranam it means to fully release yourself to the ground as a prayer. And to offer that over and over, I know that the places that I've seen this so beautifully happen is in the Krishna temples. When that, you know, you just the minute that they would come in the room, they would allow their whole bodies to come down to the ground and just in a prayer. So that's kind of where I'm going today is I want to have our practice be a prayer. Here's a little, um, say this to you, to do pranam means to put one's head at the feet of God. And his feet are everywhere. So therefore, remember, to pranam means to open oneself to the divine power, which is always streaming down from everyone to everyone. So let's start there. Let's go ahead and take your belly to the floor. Bring your arms out in front of you and make a prayer. Arms out in front of you and make a prayer. Yeah, beautiful. Yep. And then for <laughs> any of you, if it, it may have happened to you before that you got annoyed at someone. <laughs> and there's that moment that you know that this is God standing in front of you. God is standing in front of you because it's taking you to your core. It's taking you into yourself so deeply. That thing that annoyed you that you're holding on to. That you know for sure it is God standing in front of you. The moment that Krishna. And Arjuna had that experience where Arjuna said, I had no idea. I've thought of you as a friend. I hope you'll forgive me for not noticing you as God. And as that belly touches the earth, just let your body feel that release. Full release. Full letting go. And then allow yourself to slowly come back up and sit back into child's pose. And maybe with that same essence of the prayer hand in front of you. Pranam, to give yourself over to that energy. And not just once, over and over again, 
sunrise to sunset. When you have this type of a blessing that you're offering, the prana, the energy of love, the energy of the heart just flows always and automatically. So we're gonna do just a simple chant to the prana, the pranic energy. So go ahead and come up to sit. And repeat, keeping your eyes closed, repeat after me. Om Pranaya Swaha. Om Pranaya Swaha. We honor the indrawing, rising energy of Prana. Om Apanaya Swaha. Oh, Apanaya Swaha. I honor the downward flow, the rooting flow of my essence. Om Samanaya Swaha. Om Samanaya Swaha. I honor the energy that's contracting to my core. Om Bhyanaya Swaha. Om Bhyanaya Swaha. I honor the energy that expands from my core. Om Udanaya Swaha. Om Udanaya Swaha. I honor the energy that rises and moves outward to all cells. The God in me sees the God in you. Beautiful. Let your eyes open and come onto your hands and knees and press back to downward facing dog. You may move your heels if you'd like, bend your knees if you'd like. Do I say your name, Ellie? Is that correct? Okay. Awesome. And then bend your knees deeply here, lift your seat high, and then do a little cat cow here, please. And I'm gonna offer to you, if it feels right, that every time we move through the vinyasa, you come down to your belly and pranam, if it feels right for you. But next time your ears come in line with your arms, press your thighs back, straighten the legs, reach down through your heels, whether or not downward facing dog, the heels touch the floor or not. And then forward to plank, lower down to your belly, stretch your arms out in front of you if you'd like, take a breath. Palms can come to touch in prayer or not. And then slide the hands back, lifting into Cobra, Bhujangasana, navel in. I'm pressing back downward facing dog. Beautiful. <laughs> Inhaling that right leg back and up behind you, down dog split. And stepping that right foot forward, high lunge. Reach your arms over the top of your head and bring that prayer over the top of your head. Maybe thumbs can curl around each other. Straighten those arms, squeeze those ears just for fun. And then clasp the hands together and let just the pointer finger reach up. Good, lean back, armpits back. Squeeze behind the shoulder blade, soft ribs. And then touch down, hands to the floor, downward facing dog. 
Beautiful. Roll forward to plank and lower all the way down to your belly. Take it through your vinyasa. Pause with a prayer. And finding yourself back in downward facing dog. Inhaling that left leg back and up behind you, down dog split, beautiful. And stepping the left foot forward, soft landing. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Let the prayer touch overhead. And then sweetly let the hands as they curl into each other, point your finger laser-like, reach up. Sky energy, earth energy, lean back. Beautiful. And release, touch down, downward facing dog. Stepping your right foot forward, open up to Virabhadrasana two, second warrior. And take your arms overhead, interlace your palms and press straight up. Sink deep into that right thigh. And then feel that back heel as a rooting, as a connecting, as a supporting. Beautiful. Straighten that front leg. Bend it again. Reach the arms out to letter T. Send your right forearm over your right thigh, left arm over your ear side angle. And then just reach your right arm up. Try to touch your left hand. Reach your right arm up off your leg and try to touch your left hand. So reach up. Yeah. And then bring that prayer back to your heart. Lift yourself back up, Virabhadrasana, to send those arms out from that prayer. Inhale deeply. Exhale, hands down to the floor, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, Vera two. Take your arms overhead, interlace your palms, press straight up. Press up, or finger up, <laughs> whatever I did on the other side. Yeah, good. Yeah, do both, a little of both. Good, straighten that front leg. Rebend it and let your left forearm drop onto your thigh, right arm over your ear. Good, let that left arm float up, touch your right palm, or left palm up to touch your right. Good, come all the way back up, Vera two. Reach those arms out, beautiful. Inhale deeply, exhale, hands touch down, downward facing dog. We know this to be true, that our asana practice is a moving prayer, we know that. But even more, come forward to plank and lower to your belly and bring your hands out in front of you and bring your hands to prayer. The connection that we bring to Mother Earth, the blessings that we receive and give, whole body as an invocation. So sacred, so sweet. And then slide your hands back for cobra. Press down through the toes, lift from the heart. Drag those hands back and downward facing dog. Beautiful, everyone. Inhale that right leg back and up behind you. Down dog split, so sweet. And step your right foot forward. And walk to the left until you come to the center of your mat. Turn, turn, turn. Prasadi to Padottanasana. Beautiful. And then allow yourself just to bow here, a deep bow. Squeeze your shins toward each other, widen your inner knees. Wide legged forward bend, facing the long side of your mat. Your right leg is forward, your left leg is back. Prasadi to Padottanasana. Melody, walk to your left until you're in the middle of your mat. Walk left. 
There you go. And then walk your hands forward so it's as if you're taking a wide-legged downward facing dog. Lift the armpit so you can feel that wonderful support of your upper back. <laughs> Linda, are you still in down dog split? Should be in a wide-legged forward bend. Beautiful. There you go. You got it, my friend. <laughs> be holding that down dog split for way too long. Good, and then come on up to your tippy toes, lift up onto your tippy toes and draw your calf muscles up the back of your legs. Sweep up how strong you are. And then lower those heels down, but keep your seat as high as it'll go. Yeah. And then walk your hands back to the front of the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Vinyasa of choice or none. And then go ahead and send your left leg back behind you, down dog split. Feel that. Feel that gift of this body opening up as a prayer. Left foot steps forward, walk to your right until you come to the center of your mat. Feel the support of the shins drawing in. The inner knees must stay wide. And again, that deep bow. Pranam, you bring your head to the feet of God. There really is no thought in it. A deep bow of grace. <clears throat> Walk your hands forward so you'll be in a nice long dog. Lift the armpits. Maybe stay on fingertips if that feels good. Get lighter. Navel stays in, rib cage stays lifted. Maybe even feel that simple rounding in your middle back, just supporting. Beautiful, I'll take one more breath here. And then walk it back in and walk it back to the front of your mat, downward facing dog. Good, step your right foot forward and float right into half moon. So take it right into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Maybe a block underneath your right hand. And then see if you can float your hands to prayer here. See if you can bring your hands to prayer. Keep squeezing your legs toward each other, powerful. And then allow that right hand to float back down to the floor if you lifted it up. Step back into triangle trikonasana. Maybe even take your legs in a little closer if they're really far apart. You can feel the power of that back leg. And then can you take both arms and frame your ear? So reach both arms to the front of your mat. Bring your hands to prayer, come all the way back up. Virabhadrasana two, stretch the arms out, bend the front knee. Nice, Elisa. And float your hands down to the floor, downward facing dog. Take it through the vinyasa of your choice again or none. Maybe resting in the prayer. <clears throat> Beautiful, left foot steps forward and go right into half moon, right into Ardha Chandrasana. Back foot flexed, as if you're squeezing a giant block between your legs, a powerful leg. 
And then see if by using the power of your legs and the navel center, you can squeeze your hands together at your heart. Maybe look down to the floor, that'll help. Beautiful. And then go ahead and step it back, coming into triangle pose. Trikonasana. Left foot's forward, right leg is back, triangle. Then frame your ears with your arms, reach forward. Bring your hands together, prayer at your heart, and come on up, Vera two. Stretch the arms out from the heart. Good, inhale in Vira Bhadrasana two. Exhale, hands to the floor, downward facing. Drop down to your knees, press back into child's pose. The very first time that I had the grace of meeting my teacher, Guru Dev Swami Sachinanda, I was watching many people drop to their knees and touch his feet, and I could not understand the ritual. I was very new to yoga. I even suggested that, you know, did I have to do that? That was just so weird. And when the time came for me to meet him, and he was just in front of me, there was no thought in my head at all. I just dropped down to my knees and touched his feet. There was nothing, it just, my body just did it. to see that God essence in everyone, not just spiritual teachers. To recognize that energy, to bow to that energy in each and every one of us, not only nature animals. Come on up to your hands and knees, sweep your right arm out to the right and send your right arm underneath your left, threading the needle. Each exhale, see yourself moving deeper. And maybe it's not physically, maybe it's a deeper breath. Maybe the mind releases a little bit more. The nervous system relaxes a little bit more. And then inhale, come on up and switch to the other side. Beautiful, everyone, really nice. Exhaling deeply. Softening the skin. Any of these ritual practices that we do, just expand the heart, that's all it is. Beautiful. Take one more breath here. And then rise back up, downward facing dog, at Mukha Shvanasana. Walk or jump to the front of the mat, coming into squat. And here in squat, let your hands drop down to the floor and drop your head. Just drop and round in that back body. Let that left arm just cuddle real deep inside that left knee. So left arm, left knee, and then raise your right arm up to the sky. Look to your right hand. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Yep. And take it to the other side. Open that right shoulder. Open, open, open. Beautiful. And touch down. Straighten those legs standing forward bend. Place your hands on your hips, push down through your legs, rise up to stand. 
Bring your hands to your heart center. Close your eyes and begin breath of fire. Inhale, exhale through the nose, pumping the navel center. Anybody in here needs a tissue? I think that's some. Navel in and out, fire center. And then exhale fully. Inhale deeply. And exhale, release the hands down. Beautiful. Okay. Let the eyes open. Bring your left knee into your chest. Draw your shoulders back. Remember when you lift a knee, the sit bones, the pelvis begins to tilt forward nicely. So, so bring those sit bones back and wide, navel in. And then hands to your heart center. Lift your chin, Sarit. Chin up. There you go. <laughs> And then start to send your left leg back behind you, Virabhadrasana three. And then once you take the left leg back to where you feel like it's going to be, <laughs> bend both knees again. And from your spine, start to stretch your arms out and stretch your legs to straight. So feel like your spine is pulling the ends of you to straight. Really nice, everyone. Bring it back and release that leg down. Very nice, nice rock. All right, let's try the second side. Bring your right knee in, send your sit bones back and wide. Bring your hands to your heart as a prayer. Shoulders back, yes, very nice. And then send that leg back. And when you come to that place, of Virabhadrasana three, re-bend your knees, send that navel toward the spine and then shoot the arms and the legs to straight as if your spine is doing it. Pull from your spine, nice and, yep. Beautiful, and then reach back. And release. I didn't know Guy was there. I see Guy's head. <laughs> Good. Inhale the arms to the sky. Exhale, bow forward. Good. Send your left leg back behind you. Come up to a warrior one, please. Clasp your hands overhead. Point your finger to the sky. Good. Squeeze the arms. Pull the armpits back. And then let the elbows drop to the side, cactus arm. Nice. Lift the chest, lean back. Yep. Nice. Clasp your hands behind your back. And then drop your head to the floor. Bow forward. Beautiful. As the hands reach down to the floor, send the right leg back and up behind you. Down dog split. Point the toes to the floor, keep those hips nice and square. And then send your right knee forward for pigeon. If you need to lie on your back, please do. Squeeze your knees toward each other. Make sure you're rooting through the baby toes. So the action in those shins stays. And then walk forward until your forehead comes down to the mat. Wherever you find yourself, breathe deeply. Nice. Every cell of the body. We know this through every cell of the body of the Atman. Through every cell of the body is infused with nature. My Ayurvedic teachers just say that our cells, they just get confused. 
they get confused, they forget their essence because of living life. And when we forget who we are and we act in strange ways, when we remember, we see God everywhere. Good, walk yourself back up, downward facing dog. Feel free to take a vinyasa if you'd like. Beautiful. And inhaling that left leg back and up behind you. Yes. Step that left foot forward and come into nice Jane Warrior One. Interlace your palms, point your finger up, squeeze your ears. But every time I ask you to squeeze your ears, then I need you to relax your shoulders. I need you to find the effort and the ease. Beautiful. Uh, and then let your elbows bend wide. And then clasp your hands behind your back, take a breath in and bow forward. You got a double down dog split on this side, didn't you? Hands to the floor, left leg back and up behind you, down dog split, bonus. <laughs> and left knee comes forward for pigeon. Again, if you would like to lie on your back, please do. Squeeze your knees in. Yeah, and then walk yourself forward, forehead to the mat. Full body. Whatever you're doing, it is a prayer offering. Motion in motion. Take some deep breaths here, long exhales. We also were playing a little bit on Tuesday with retention breath at the end of the exhale, holding the incredible blood purifier, that retention breath. Beautiful. Take one more breath here. And then again, downward facing dog. Stepping the right foot forward, lower the left knee, Anjaneyasana, arms to the sky. Interlace palms, point your finger to the sky. Nice margin. Drop deep into your pelvis, outer armpits, inner elbows back. So with the outer armpits, inner elbows. Good, then lean back, lean back, lean back. Beautiful. Hands down to the floor, straighten the front leg, Ardha Hanumanasana or Hanumanasana, either half split or full split. Keep that rounding in your back, keep that slight sense of pulling your ribs back. Keep the hips square. Nice catch in. Beautiful, Kathy. Nice dancing. Janet, Ronnie, Susan, long time. Leave me alone. Good. Inhale, come on out. Downward dog. Feel free to take it through a vinyasa. Otherwise, left foot comes forward and we meet on the other side. And Janayasana. Make sure that that right knee is not directly underneath that right hip. 
Inhale the arms to the sky, use the breath to raise the arms up and then interlace the palms and press the pointer finger to the sky. There are many variations, but for today, that feels good to me. As much as you're reaching up, draw your shoulder blades onto your back, squeeze behind your heart. Nice, lean back, lean back, throat back, throat back. Inhale deeply. Gorgeous, hands down to the floor. Nice, Audrey, nice, Aneta. And then straighten that front leg, Ellie, beautiful. And slowly moving into Hanuman. Hanuman. Last year at this time, a group of us were getting ready to leave for India. One of the sweethearts on the trip offered to us to um, do a postcard to write something to ourselves and that she'd send it a year later. And so it arrived the other day. So cute. I, at the time I was like, that's a cute idea, like whatever. But getting that postcard with my handwritten, what I wished for, OMG. Just a good idea for you. Come on back, downward facing dog. I was just entertaining you in Hanuman. <laughs> Tell you stories in Hanuman. Good, roll forward to your belly, slide your arms out in front of you, bring your hands together. Pranam. Just feel the earth below you, receiving your prayer. Receiving your prayer. Beautiful. Okay, clasp your hands behind your back. Shrug your shoulders towards your ears to get a little bit more side body space and then draw your shoulder blades onto your back, maybe even bending your elbows. And then begin to lift your head, neck and chest, shooting your chest forward, pulling your arms back to straight. Maybe let the legs float up too, if that feels good to you. And then bending the knees, reach back for the ankles. Nice. And then lift up. And if you feel a little extra spicy today, do some rocking bow poses. Rock forward and rock back. And then as you release your hands, press back into child's pose. Really nice, everyone. Walking your upper body to the right side of the mat, stretching the left side of your body. And walking your upper body to the left side of your mat, stretching the right side of your body. Beautiful, come all the way back and then just lift yourself up onto your knees, take your butt off your heels, bring your hands to your heart center. And instead of your hands touching each other, bring your right palm onto your heart, your left hand on top. Yeah, and then push up into that. Let your heart rise up into your hands. Squeeze your shins toward each other. So make sure your shins are active. If you don't trust your shins, put a block there and start to lean back as if you're gonna go to camel, but keep pressing your heart up. Lean back as if you're going to camel, but press your heart up to meet your hands. Push up, keep pushing up, navel in, push up. Good, come on back up. Beautiful, beautiful. If you can sit back on your heels, sit back on your heels for a moment. 
If you cannot sit on your heels, just stay lifted. So it's very easy when we're taking camel to drop back. So to keep thinking of lifting up into your chest as you're dropping your arms back to take camel. So go ahead, come on up again. You can either keep your hands at the same spot or go ahead and begin to reach for camel, but keep the imprint of your hands there and lift up into them as you reach your hands back towards your ankles. Maybe reaching your hands back to your ankles is too much, so hands at your low back. Beautiful, everybody in the room, really nice. Beautiful, everyone on Zoom. And then slowly come on up, sit back on your heels if you can, or sit between your heels if you can, Bhadrasana or Virasana. Close your eyes for a moment. And if sitting on your heels does not work, maybe a block underneath your seat. Great, Jane, excellent. Really nice. Okay, come on up. And we're gonna come into down dog. It's gonna be the easiest way to get there. So downward facing dog, right foot steps forward, lower the left knee on Janayasana. How do I want you to do this? Um, okay. I want you to <laughs> reach back for your left ankle. So see if you can take your left foot off of the mat and left hand reaches back for left ankle. Make sure your knee is not directly underneath your hip. Good, now can your right hand reach back for that ankle too? If not, that's fine. Maybe a strap even here. And then what I would like for you to start to do, and if your right hand doesn't reach back, maybe just keep your hand reaching back even though it doesn't touch. Yeah, and then I want you to start to bring your heel toward the floor. So it's almost like you're in a one-legged camel here. Start to bring your heel toward the floor. Toward, 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 Set, keep leaning. Yeah, falling out of it is meaning, is perfect. Yeah, yep, yep. And release, right? So it's like a one-legged camel, pretty intense, right? Try the other side, jump switch or step switch. What did you say? I love the beginning of a joke. There was this one. Yeah. Okay. Reach for that ankle. And again, just, you know, take it for a little ride here. So you can always stop and park, you know, anywhere. Just take it little bit by little bit. Reach one hand for the ankle. That can be enough. Reach the other hand for it. Keep leaning your left knee forward. The push your left knee forward as your other leg comes back. Yes. Yes. Nice. Yes, beautiful, all right, good. Step switch, nice, Chrissy. Step switch or jump switch to the first side. This is a much easier thing I'm gonna ask you to do. Just allow your arms to float alongside the body, turn your palms face forward. And I want your fingertips to come toward the floor. So keep letting your pelvis reach down, reach down, but don't let your heart sink. So imagine your hands to let your heart lifting up but keep reaching your fingertips to the floor. Yes, yes, reach, keep reaching, keep reaching. Your fingertips are gonna to touch the floor, I promise. Go, Janet. Good, nice, Audrey, beautiful, come on up. Nice, Allison, jump sit, switch or step switch? Or crawl switch. <laughs> I honor it all, call a prayer no matter how you get there. All right, fingertips toward the floor, palms face forward, shoulders open. Yes, yes, yes. Keep the chest lifted as if your hands were on your heart. Okay. Cramp. Ooh. Good. One more deep breath here. And release. Good. Downward facing dog. Stretch it all out. Walk or jump to that squat and lie down on your back.
You can hug your knees into your chest. Squeeze in. Bring your nose up to meet your knees for just a moment. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, drop the head back down, drop the feet back down. Feel the shins drawing toward each other. Navel in, ribs to the floor, heart up. And then come on up into bridge, lift up those hips. <clears throat> Make sure the chin is lifted so that the sides of the throat stays, stays nice and long. Pay attention to those shins. Don't get sloppy. Breathe in and breathe out. Every day and every way I am becoming. I'm seeing the world more clearly. I'm seeing myself more clearly. Teachings of yoga, know yourself. Know the true self. And then lower down. Separate your feet a little wider. Let your knees come to touch. Feet wide, knees touch. Beautiful. And then go ahead and place your right ankle on top of your left knee, right ankle, left knee, left knee into your chest. Flex both feet. We're doing, yeah, right ankle on top of left knee on our backs. And then lifting your head up once again and reaching for your left foot. So just unlock your hands and reach for your foot and squeeze in. Yep. Yep. And gently release and change sides, ankle to knee, second side. Again, really flex your feet. Don't make believe, truly flex your feet. your breath become deeper. And then go ahead and lift your head and reach for that right foot, squeeze in, navel pulls in deeply. And then release your head back down. Stretch your legs up to the sky, straight up. Stretch your arms up to the sky. Close your eyes and just breathe. Keep the navel drawing toward the floor. But allow your action to be light. Effort meets grace. Ascending effort, descending grace. Keep breathing. Now wrap your right knee on top of your left knee, right knee on top of left, left elbow on top of right, so it's lying down, eagle pose. Keep squeezing your knees in. Squeeze your shins toward each other. Keep your hands lifted off your face and breathe. Unwind and take your legs back up to the sky, your arms back up to the sky. 
and then rewind to the other side. Breathe deep here, don't hold your breath. Be the divine at work, even when it's not something that you like. Those moments you get triggered, no, it's standing right in front of you for you. And then release, bring the feet down to the floor. Just relax the arms down alongside the body, construct a breast pose. So one option here is to bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees drop wide. Another option would be to take an inversion. So if you want to invert either shoulder stand, headstand, handstand, forearm balance, you're welcome to do that. With your feet together, your knees dropped wide, supine baddha konasana. Wherever you've chosen to go, keep breathing. And hold it for one more minute, but if you need to come down before that, feel free to do that. And then slowly begin to make your way down. And we're gonna meet back sitting on our mats. So take anything you would like coming out of your inversion, maybe fish, maybe child. Let's meet seated, please. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Take a couple of forward bends. Start with John of Shoshasana. Bring your right foot into your left thigh. Take a little twist over your left leg. Let the knee fall out to the side. And then come over your left leg. Yeah. Like a prayer, John of Shoshasana, bowing over. That's why mantra can be so powerful when the mind gets full of things that are disturbing us. Insert mantra. Beautiful. 
Keep that navel drawn in, slowly rise back up. And let's switch sides, other side. Or living Gita. Gita means song. Bhagavan is God, song of God. Story of Arjuna. Your living Gita. Your true song. And we sing it to each other, with each other. We need each other. Really nice, navel in, come on up. Beautiful, everyone. And then finally take your legs nice and wide, wide like a floor bend. Maybe a blanket underneath your seat if you need it. Maybe bend your knees and take it more from your spine as opposed to your hamstrings. So come forward between your legs, maybe a block underneath your head. It's the greatest practice of devotion to yourself, to others. And I bow to the prana that lives in me, the upward flow, the downward flow, takes me to my core, takes me away from my core, goes into every cell of my body. I bow. Good, inhale, come on up. Find a comfortable seat, cross-legged seat. Maybe turn your palms face up, thumb and first finger touching, or maybe palms facing down, thumb and first finger touching. We'll just sit for three minutes in silent meditation. Go in to listen.
You can stay here if you want. Turn around to lie down on your back. You choose to lie on your back, maybe take a final spinal twist. Pulling the right knee in first and then the left. Or both at the same time, whatever feels good to you. So gently begin to deepen your breath. Let your body begin to stretch and yawn in any way that serves you well. If you're lying down, go ahead and hug your knees into your chest. Roll to the side and come on up to sit.
bring your hands to your heart center. Inhale for the sound of Om. Big breath in. Sending that prayer up to the space between the eyebrows. Thank you so, so, so much, everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Make it great. We will see you all soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you.